So yourself. Potential audiences, I think. We'll Potentially know, we'll audiences, yes. Who else might you be writing for? The public. The public, yes, the audience. Who else might you be writing for? The cast of creatives. Yeah, the profession. Okay, so those are the people that actually, all those things. None of those are really the answer. The person I'm really writing for is my editor. Yeah? Because it's my editor who every day is kind of saying, well, will you fill that kind of 350 or 450 words? And who says, and do it again tomorrow. Yes? So actually, my editor doesn't really care what I think about the play. Or, yes, all they want is 400, you know, fairly entertaining words that could be read by somebody in Shetland who is never going to go and see that play that you're saying is a five-star review, yeah? Uh, and that actually will be entertaining. On the blog, there is limitless space, in a sense. I mean, of course, it does still cost. Uh, there are costs involved. Um, but having said that, uh, it means that one of the things that really I've been able to do you know, over the last five, seven years, is to think out loud about theatre. And that's what, uh, you know, I really see my job now as doing, that, uh, uh, that uh, you know, that I don't just go out and review shows and I don't just go out and write features, but I actually think about uh, how theatre works, how it might work differently. Uh, but I think that I've been just fantastically lucky to be around at a particular period in time when uh, actually uh, the platform became available in order uh, to allow me to do that. And I think one of the things that, um, uh, that's perhaps sort of underestimated, uh, and it happens a lot, you know, people sort of say to me, well, why haven't you been to Wales this week? And why haven't you been to Glasgow this week? And why is that, you know, which is that one, there are only so many nights in the week. Secondly, it would be quite nice to occasionally see my family. And thirdly, it is that newspapers are businesses, you know, as, uh, and that every time I get on a train and go to Glasgow or go to Wales, wherever it might be, it costs, um, you know, that this isn't part of the remit of what newspapers should do. But without doubt, for both newspapers and for bloggers who obviously, you know, are not attached to any newspaper, at least if I pay for a train fare, I can then claim the train fare back. If you're Andrew Hayden, uh, you can't. Uh, as at that. What then happens is about what gets reviewed and what doesn't get reviewed. Uh, and of course, what gets reviewed is what is valued in the culture. It got to the stage that it was taking me, you know, several hours a week in order to do it. And then uh, it kind of went via the subs and it took them time because they had to check all the links and things like that. And the point really was that it simply didn't get enough clicks to justify it, to justify the amount of time that was really going into it. So the Guardian asked if I would drop it. Um, but what became quite interesting was that it wasn't getting enough clicks, but it was a question really of um, people not realising that um, they had something that they valued until it went. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And in fact, Carl was one of the people who... Um, petition. Yes, he, he set up a petition. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We had about four, four five hundred yeah. people signing from all yeah. over the country. Yeah. And I made sure it was CC'd into the editor yeah, of the Guardian yeah. as well. Yeah, so yeah. He yeah. was getting so, all of these lobbyists. So anyway, I think I'm very lucky because I feel quite protected by the mm. theatre community. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think in terms of level of... Uh, you know, if you look at comment is free on the Guardian, and the kind of you know, it's kind of you know, uh, you kind of have to put on a sort of safety suit before mm. you kind of look at the comments if you've written uh, something. Sometimes uh, I think that often people within the theatre community really, really kind of come to my defence. That was just a really good example of one because actually I was away, I was I didn't have internet, mm. and the whole thing kind of took off, and I hadn't yes. gone in there. And in the end, I can't remember whether I did comment halfway through. I think I may have just yeah. let it run its course. Mm. Uh, but of course, I had Erica Wyman on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> we must it. meet. Yes. <laughs>
I always kind of think that one of the things is that when, uh, you know, people like Mark Shent and Tim Walker go, oh, woe me, this is truly dreadful, uh, what is going on? One, as I said earlier, I think it's actually about uh, being concerned about privilege uh, and the fact that one is privileged to have a platform. But I think it's also um, about misunderstanding. Um, and I think there are all sorts of things that are going on at the moment, which I think are very interesting, of which I think the fact that there are suddenly all these people, you know, sitting here giving up their Saturday afternoon in order to talk about criticism. And, you know, I really simply think that 10 years ago that wouldn't have happened. It wouldn't have happened because you wouldn't potentially have the platforms that you do have, and that is a kind of really major thing. Um, but I think it's about a much wider cultural shift that is taking place. And I think it's around, and I think it's something that on the whole that theatres have been quite slow to actually latch onto. And it's the idea that uh, people both want to do and they want to consume. I come from a generation <coughs> of people, uh, you know, sort of, uh, you know, the, the late baby boomers, yeah, um, who grew up to be consumers, yes? That effectively, that uh, what we became very good at was buying things, okay? But the sort of shifts that have taken place with technology mean that uh, now not only do you have a platform where if you want to, you can write about theatre, um, it's actually much easier to do things. A really good example of it would be um, when I was uh, a 10-year-old, if I wanted to make an animation, what I'd do is that I'd make lots of drawings like this on a thing, and then I'd flick the pages very fast, yes? Now, if you are a 10-year-old, you can go online and get the free tools in order to make an animation that actually could be really, really professional, yeah? Incredibly professional. Now, if you are a 10-year-old and you do that, does it make you... Do, do you go, oh, I can make my own animations now so I won't bother to watch The Simpsons anymore? <laughs> It doesn't, does it? No, actually, it's likely to make you want to watch The Simpsons more. So I think one of the things that theatre actually uh, needs to engage with a great deal more than it currently is, is the idea that people will still and are always going to want to go to the theatre and see a good production of Hamlet, or we hope the his a good production of the History Boys, yes, uh, as like that, and those things are going to happen. But they also want to participate in some way. Now, for some people, that means that actually they want to get up on the stage of the Winchester Theatre Royal and do it for themselves. For a lot of people, that won't be the case. It will be other kinds of participatory activity, and I think that that absolutely can be around criticism. I think one of the things that, um, I think it may be the thing that may save some of the theatres like that, because otherwise, quite honestly, I think they're doomed. And I think there's something else that's very interesting that's going on, which is that um, I think that writing leads to thinking. Yes? In a way, I don't know if you've ever noticed yourselves uh, about writing, that if you kind of, you know, come out of the theatre and you've seen something and you found it really interesting and you have a chat with your friends afterwards, um, often the quality of what you talk about is slightly different to what happens is if you then sit down maybe the next day or a few days later and write about it, uh, that it makes you think harder. Writing makes you think harder. Uh, the the theatre blog, I think, has absolutely become a site in which people have talked around and think around theatre, and uh, um, uh, I think it has done something that's been quite interesting. Sometimes the conversation doesn't even take place on the site. The Guardian would wish that it did, and that it always took place below the line on the site, but it absolutely doesn't. Sometimes the conversation moves somewhere else entirely. It moves to Twitter, it moves to Facebook. Sometimes, in fact, actually, uh, it moves out into rooms, and it never really takes place in that way. And actually, it's quite interesting in terms of what Carl was mentioning earlier about, and I was saying about the click thing. The click thing is, of course, important, because if nobody is clicking on it at all, 
then, um, uh, yeah, I'm not going to have a job. Uh, I will lose my privilege. Um, but I think that one of the things is that, uh, that the Guardian sort of has understood, which is that, um, uh, that sometimes there isn't necessarily always a correlation between the number of comments underneath something and how much something is being read or how influential something might be. Yeah? Um, I think more people now, as I say, write about theatre, think about theatre, talk about theatre than there has ever been. And, um, you know, that is good for theatre. Yeah. If they are going to be saved, they are only going to be saved if, in fact, the public roundabout go, yeah, actually, that's really important to me. Yeah, I want that. And the only way that will happen is if you build a real community of interest around it. You know, it's uh, not, you know, I think there is too much in theatre about trying to sell a ticket to somebody and not actually about really trying to engage that person in some way. Um, and I think there needs to be more collaboration uh, with audiences in some ways, or potential audiences. Um, there's a really good study, I mean, terrifying, which is a group of people were asked in um, Glasgow about uh, why would they go, you know, uh, why they didn't go to the art gallery. And they all said, because I wouldn't spend money on that. Well, it was free. <laughs> and that kind of, you know, sort of stuff that, that actually there are barriers which are, you know, not just, to do, of course, it's to do partly with cost, but there are many other barriers. And I think that theatre has not been very good about dealing with those barriers. Um, it was an article I wrote, in fact, it was around Saddle as Wells, and mm -hmm. it was about the fact that I was kind of praising the fact that um, uh, Saddle as Wells have integrated within their programmes, so what actually goes on on their stages, and they have three stages, the Peacock, the main Saddle as Wells, and the Lillian Bayliss, uh, actually uh, reflects their commitment to children's work. And I suppose the point really that I was making was that uh, uh, it needs to be there in the programme. Uh, you know, lots of companies and theatres have absolutely fantastic outreach programmes, but it basically the work goes on below the waterline, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, and that there is a sort of slight suggestion that that doesn't really kind of then... Um, uh, uh, it doesn't feel as though the work for children is really, and families is really valued in any way. Uh, mm -hmm. that. I mentioned in passing in that the National Theatre and the RSC, but in fact, actually, in fact, it's a very good example of the fact that the headline writer, I don't write the headlines, uh, as at that, uh, said, made it into something that mm. kind of uh, said, uh, you know, RSC failing to be as good <laughs> as Sadler as well. And of course the RSC got, you know, tremendously upset about it because in fact actually they have lots and lots of incredibly good work that they do in schools uh, and, um, uh, you know, that they do in outreach programmes. I mean, my view about it absolutely would just simply be that, uh, actually what I said was absolutely yeah. correct, uh, that, um, uh, that, uh, you know, uh, yeah, they do do all those things, and nobody is saying that they don't do those things, but that wasn't what the piece was about, but no. the piece was about... Uh, and it can take on another yeah. life with yeah. a different tagline. Yeah, it can, yeah, absolutely.